Hey, what is going on all of you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. Motor coach operators in the US can be assigned to do many different types of trips. Some are scheduled line runs where the operator can typically expect to spend their day transporting ticket purchasing commuters to a destination on a preset route, usually from city to city. The drivers driving these routes will typically have some break times built into their day, usually ranging from multiple 15 minute breaks to half an hour or hour long breaks. Now I won't go into line runs too much because I'll be actually doing an entire video on this topic soon on a different video. So stay tuned for that. With that said, motor coach drivers and coach buses will predominantly spend most of their careers going on charter trips. A charter trip is when a group or an organization such as, but not limited to, a school or church or business reserves a bus for those within their organization to go on a trip. It could be for a school field trip to an amusement park or zoo or a church outing, or it could be an office treating their staff to a day at a baseball game. Some of these trips are day trips where the driver picks them up from their origin point and takes them usually an hour to three hours away to their destination and wait for them to do their thing, then bring the group back at the end of the day. And some of these trips can be multi-day trips where the driver will have to stay at a hotel overnight or however long the group decides to stay at their destination. Unless a charter group requires the driver to constantly shuttle them to multiple places all day long, which does happen as well. A charter driver's day will typically involve spending hours driving the group there, then spending hours or days waiting for them to get back on the coach to return home. While waiting for their groups, a charter driver is usually left with lots of time on his or her hands with not a lot to do. Now, depending on the destination of the group, some charter drivers find themselves sitting in the middle of nowhere if the group's destination is remote. Some end up in large designated coach parking areas if the group should be visiting places like amusement parks or sports events. And for some charter drivers, they should be so lucky if they can find any parking at all, as some group's destinations require the driver to drop off at a busy street, leaving the driver to fend for themselves as far as finding a place where they can leave their coach for the day. In large metropolitan cities like Chicago and New York, charter drivers may have to drive 10 to 20 miles away from the group's drop-off point in order to find any kind of suitable parking for a 45 foot long vehicle. And finally, on multi-day trips, the driver usually finds him or herself sitting in a hotel room for days on end if the passengers do not require the coach to shuttle them anywhere during their stay. When it's all said and done, a charter driver's day is composed of lots of pre-planning, then long hours of driving, followed by short bursts of stressful, overwhelming moments, then long hours of boredom, all the way up to the time their passengers need to be picked up again. This cycle then repeats itself until the driver returns home. It's all just part of the job. But when a charter bus driver gets a few trips under his or her belt, they start to learn the ropes and benefits of their job and start using their time more wisely. Talk to any seasoned charter driver and one will get all kinds of fun and interesting ways that charter drivers spend their downtime while on a trip. Today, we're gonna take a look at what charter drivers do for those three to eight hours on day trips while the passengers are off enjoying their day. So for all of you passengers out there who have ever wondered, where does the driver go after you're off to the roller coasters? I'm gonna answer that question for you today. For those of you who watch my content frequently, you would know that I myself am a motor coach operator and every once in a while, I get the pleasure of driving a trip. I also work in a company with many other motor coach operators since I work for a motor coach company. If you have something to say to me, say it. With that said, in the interest of getting a wider perspective for this video and topic, I didn't just want to talk about what I like to do on trips during my downtime or even the drivers here at Peoria Charter. I went and asked the question to coach drivers all over the US and Canada. I even got a response from a driver from the UK. You see, I'm a part of several Facebook groups for motor coach operators and bus drivers. In fact, the admins there are kind enough to let me post my videos on their groups for all the members to see. So admins, if you're watching this, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you letting me post my YouTube content on your Facebook groups. These groups are the perfect place for bus nuts and geeks to, well, geek out. Now, some of these groups actually have certain requirements to join, such as being an actual motor coach operator or bus driver of some sort. 
I will post the names of all these motor coach and bus operator Facebook groups that I'm a part of down in the description box below. If any of you bus nuts, geeks, or enthusiasts out there want a place to mingle with real life bus drivers and motor coach operators and get all of your bus questions answered, well, these Facebook groups are the place to be. But again, keep in mind, some of these groups may not allow you to join if you don't meet their criteria, so be sure to read the rules before you try to join. Also, before I get started, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who responded to my inquiries on all the bus and motor coach groups on Facebook. I wish I could have shared all of your responses because they were all good ones, but in order to keep the video around 15 minutes, I could only pick so many. Oh, and one more thing, I did my best to research the pronunciation of all of your names, so if I butcher your name, please forgive me and correct me down in the comment box below so that I know the proper pronunciation of your name. So with that said, let's check out what some of the motor coach operators wrote in response to my question. Braden Lewis from Lewis Coach Incorporated wrote, shining and tidying up the coach, making it look brand new each time the group sees it, putting armrests down, closing overhead bins, giving it that beginning of the trip look again. Love the video, James. Well, thanks, Braden. I really appreciate that. Yes, drivers do spend some of their downtime cleaning up after the passengers and making their coaches look sexy again. We coach drivers do take a lot of pride in a good looking coach. And by the way, Braden, your fleet looks downright sexy, so keep up the good work. Dallin Ebmeyer from Ebmeyer Charters wrote, I enjoy riding my e-bike that I bring with me under the bus to explore new places I visit and find some good food. That's actually a really good idea. So much easier to get around. I need to look into getting an e-bike. I've always wanted one. Landon Ebmeyer from Ebmeyer Coaches wrote, during downtime is when I do studying or research for weird defects our units have. I like to read the parts manual, schematics, etc. That's boring to most, but it helps me keep the units going. I also like to bring my smoker with me and cook things if I got several hours to kill. Sometimes I even take my son with me. Landon, spoken like a true and proud bus company owner. Also, I need to make sure I get a charter that goes to the same place you're going when you bring that smoker with you. I would love to sample what's on your menu. Dave DeLeon wrote, I have started walking and moving around trying to lose all the excess weight I've been gaining. Dave, that's actually an excellent idea and way to spend your downtime. We could all benefit from your example because God knows I could lose some myself. Legacy Tours LLC replied, I love trying out food that area or town is best known for. I think we would get along very well. Man after my own heart. By the way, that one bus of yours looks very familiar and it's nice to see it out and about. Thanks for the comment, Legacy. Brian Chamberlain replied, sleep, watch videos when I can't watch them any other time. Go for a long walk, sleep, then take a nap. Now based on Brian's answer, I also asked Brian a question that one of my viewers asked me. What is the best way to sleep on a motor coach as a driver when everyone is off the coach? Brian Chamberlain replied, I have a hammock that I string down the center aisle as far as attaching the ropes. I just tie it to both sides of the luggage rack supports. I purchased the hammock from a camping supply store. I string between two support brackets and string it down the middle of the aisle. The photo is basically what mine looks like. Now, Brian didn't actually have a photo of the hammock on the bus, but that is amazing, Brian. I, I love the idea of having a hammock strung down in the middle of the aisle. I need to really look into getting one of these hammocks. Thanks for the reply, Brian. Ryan Montalone from Executive Coach in Lancaster, Pennsylvania wrote, lots of walking around once parked and of course shining up my coach. Always love to find new coffee shops and restaurants. Thanks for the reply, Ryan. Now, I forgot to ask you in the comments, in the picture that you sent me, you show a step ladder. Do you seriously bring one of these with you on your trip so that you could shine your coach? If that is the case, that's what I call going above and beyond. Beautiful coach, by the way, Ryan, appreciate your reply. Jordan Wayne replied, sleep, walk around and explore the areas I haven't seen before and eat, getting a chance to try different things to eat in each place. Jordan Wayne also said, oh yeah, also streaming Netflix through the entertainment system. I completely agree with you as far as trying the food out. I've never been able to stream my Netflix through the coach's entertainment system. You gotta show me how. Also, uh, since Jordan also mentioned sleeping, I had to ask Jordan what the best way to sleep on a coach was. And Jordan replied, across the back seats, LOL. I've seen some drivers hang hammocks across the bus from the overheads, as mentioned before. Also seen one driver set up in the luggage bay. Thanks, Brian. I'm actually one to use the back seats for taking naps as well. So at least until I figure out how to get this hammock thing set up because I really wanna try that. Appreciate your response, Brian. 
Tamra Crenshaw, a motor coach operator from Miller Transportation out of Indianapolis says, good day. If I'm at a game, I walk around and watch to show my support for the team I'm transporting. I walk the perimeter to get some exercise, listen to a church sermon or music, and enjoy God's creations. Just depends on the outing location. Thanks, Tamara. Appreciate the reply. You guys are actually really close to us. I see your buses all the time going up and down the interstate. Good looking fleet, by the way. If you're ever in the area, drop by and say hi. Okay, what do we got next? Toya Marie replied, do what I do best, take selfies. Thanks, Toya. Appreciate the reply. I have noticed that motor coach operators do turn into really good bus photographers over the years doing this job. And that just comes from pure pride in what we do. Thanks again, Toya. Keep on taking those selfies. Andrew Biglow replied, this has been the perfect job for me as a student. I worked on my schoolwork while waiting for my passengers. It's quite nice getting paid to do something I'd be dropping anyway, especially when I get into overtime. Now, just out of curiosity, I asked Andrew what he was studying. Andrew replied, I studied emergency services management in January. I'm now looking to transition to the emergency management field. Andrew, tending to your studies, that's downtime well spent. I wish you luck in your future endeavors, buddy. In the meantime, enjoy the road trips, stay safe, and thanks for the reply. Rudy Porras wrote, I wipe down the coach and clean the wheels and glass if I'm at a venue for a while or nap if it's a short stay. Once while at our hotel in Albuquerque, I cleaned the entire exterior of my J with spray glass cleaner and paper towels because I didn't have access to a bus wash. Now that's dedication, Rudy, and may I say that your coach looks spotless in this picture. Now here is a very original one. I love this comment. This one's from Jenny Gazdick. And Jenny wrote, hey James, I have the weird one. How about sewing? Pick is courtesy of my coworker, Dan. I also have more picks to choose from. I drive for Lorenz Bus Service out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now I couldn't resist, I had to ask Jenny some more questions about this, so I spoke with her a little more on chat. She's been a motor coach operator since 1994 and has had a portable sewing machine that fits nicely on the front table of Van Hools and actually works with the 24 volt 110 outlet. And Jenny said when the groups are about to reboard, she's able to put all the gear away really quickly. Jenny also mentioned when she was driving trips during COVID, she spent her downtime sewing masks with over 1,500 masks made in the last year. Jenny, I absolutely love your originality and productivity. Thank you so much for sharing this, a lady of many talents. Keep on sewing, Jenny. Tim Pug wrote, I'm a coach driver in the UK. While in between drop off and pickup, I'll give the coach a clean, have some food, then settle down with either a book or a film on my tablet. Well, it sounds like no matter where you are in the world, motor coach operators have very similar days. Thanks for sharing from across the pond, Tim. Next, we have Steve Sulligan. Steve wrote, something we all used to do before internet and computer and phones, read the paper. Yes, very true, Steve. Seems like those were simpler days. Appreciate the reply. By the way, Steve, you guys look very comfy in that picture. Drew Huggins replied, always have time to take a few shots of the bus and buses around me, then some trip planning for the next move, then off for a walk around the area to explore. Drew Huggins also wrote, took this one yesterday in State College, Pennsylvania. Like I said earlier, motor coach operators end up becoming really good photographers. And this one just proves my point. So thanks for the reply, Drew. Oh, and by the way, Drew, are you sure you didn't take the picture for the default Windows XP desktop picture? Anyone in here remember that? These two pictures look a lot alike. Keep on taking those pictures. Andrew Horton writes, walk, see the sights, exercise, and eat. Short and to the point, Andrew, thanks my friend. That food looks delicious, by the way. I am a huge sucker for breakfast foods. Also, gorgeous looking coach there. And love that smile with the sword. That's what I call making a statement. Appreciate the response, Andrew. Okay, I know this episode was kind of a different one. Hope all of you enjoyed the insights from real life motor coach drivers from all over the US and Canada of what it is that motor coach operators do when the passengers are off the bus. Live from New Orleans, it's Jake and Ellen Swamperla. Wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. Yo, wheels on the bus go round and round. Yo. Again, if you want to check out all the cool Facebook groups that are filled with bus and coach operators, the names of the Facebook groups will be down in the description box below. All you have to do is have a Facebook account and go search for them. Speaking of Facebook, Motor Coach World now has its very own Facebook page. Check it out at facebook.com slash motorcoachworld. 
Folks, if you liked what you saw, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Also, if you want some cool Motor Coach World shirts like this one I have on today, check out my merch store at bonfire.com slash store slash motorcoachworld. The link will be down in the description box below. And finally, if you like what I do, consider supporting me by visiting Patreon and becoming a patron. You can become a patron for as low as a dollar a month. Patreon.com slash motorcoach. And once again, down in the description box below. Feel free to click that link. And folks, if you're watching this, then you are part of the motorcoach world. I'll never die.